think you need a graphic and I think you need to literally draw like a bunch of different hats on your head and then give the label on each hat. And I think that would hopefully let people see like you are, it was for his brand, but I was like, you know, there, there's so much more to you than just what maybe this one lane of people gets to meet. And, and these other lanes that make you who you are add so much value to this one lane that you get to see me in. But like, well, I was texting you a while ago. I was like, I started this entirely separate business Instagram page. And I'm like, this is not working. Like I have like a whole life and this is not working. So it's like, I, you know, sometimes it's about my kids. Sometimes it's about me and my husband. Sometimes it is about business, but I, so I just, I put a little peace out sign on the other one and I was like, come see me over here. (laughs) This well, is my actual honestly, reality. It's the, it's the recognition of this idea of personal branding, right? And and we were having this conversation in the Joyful Entrepreneur Program earlier this week is like, which one do I do? Where do I stay? Where do I fit? And in your personal brand, you always fit no matter what hat you're wearing versus a business brand. It feels like you have to position yourself all the time, mm. right? You've got to get buttoned up. You've got to get the right outfit on. You've got to get the right persona in but I don't believe that that's the way that Jesus ever rolled, right? When he walked mm-hmm. into a specific environment or a specific room, he was just him. Mm-hmm. And he might have used a parable to create connection with the person in the room so that it met them where they're at. We're not going to walk on stage at a business conference and talk about being a mom. Maybe, maybe not. I get mm-hmm. to do that tomorrow, actually, in Charlotte. Coincidentally, mm-hmm. I did not mean to use that analogy. But I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, I actually am doing that. But yeah. that then let's think about something else. We're not going to go talk to a football team and tell them about ballet or maybe Mm -hmm. you are. Hey, maybe you are. That probably would be a little bit more great. (laughs) Maybe the point is all going good analogy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's That's awesome. But truly it's the knowing that like, you don't have to fit yourself in a box when you're creating a brand, like you Mm -hmm. are your brand and there's so much more ease to that. So I'd love to like talk through how we've even had some offline conversations about how you're fitting your faith and your spirituality and your Christianity and your belief system into your business, even though it's not necessarily a precursor to your brand as Mm -hmm. mine, mine kind of is like, there's no denying faith when you say faith in your, Mm -hmm. your title, Mm -hmm. talk to me about that exploration and that journey. Yeah. So I think that, um, it, like you said, we bring us into whatever, you know, avenue of business that we're in, like you, it's, it's impossible. I've learned now to separate the two. And so knowing that that's who I am at my core, and that's where I come from in my beliefs, in my values, in my integrity, in the way that I want to protect certain hours of my day, or I want to protect the weekend or there are things that are just non-negotiables because I believe that Jesus said we can have this abundant life that we're full of joy. And so I don't feel like anything that my business may bring me should contradict what he said that I can have. And so Mm -hmm. it's not like on the top header of my website, but knowing me as a Christian, as a person who is a believer, you'll get that in every conversation because that's, I mean, he's speaking through me all the time, you know, um, the same thing with the medicine and, you know, the, that's what the Bible says. Like you, you water other, you refresh others so that you'll be refreshed. So I think these are principles that are just so ingrained in us as a believer that you, you mostly are probably getting Bible, but it doesn't maybe sound like it. I maybe right. didn't give you a, a right. you know, a chapter and a verse. <laughs> totally. I was listening to um Sarah Jakes of uh, Roberts the other day and she was like, y'all, I'm going to come up with the Ebonics version of the Bible. And I think it's going to be a number one bestseller, just like the rest of them. And she was basically just talking about how if we were to utilize common phrase, right, it, it actually can still resonate with the people who are only hearing in that specific language. Mm-hmm. And no tribe or tongue won't hear his name, right? And so let's speak Ebonics and help people figure it out and unlock something inside of them to say, Mm. whoa, I need more of that. Where did that come from? Well, we're always going to have to point back to God. We're always going to be pointing back to Jesus. So whether that's the ESL version or the message translation or the new, I mean, it doesn't matter, Mm. but it's ultimately knowing that 
anytime I read the word in a different translation, it speaks to me different. And so it's the mm-hmm. same thing when we as mouthpieces of the Lord do the same thing. We're speaking in a different phraseology. And so I just think that that's really helpful. One of the things that you said that I want to extrapolate on a bit, because I think it's important for people to understand, is you said, I don't believe that anything that comes into my business should contradict the word. Mm -hmm. And when we think of the overwhelm as a leader and you being a strategist to help people grow and impact from a mission driven perspective, that's really the missional entrepreneurs is who you love to serve. We find ourselves in places of stagnancy, of overwhelm. We're like knee deep in all the ish. And Mm -hmm. it's often because we add it to our own plates, you know, and because we're visionaries, because we're ideators, because we're creative, all these things are flying at us a million miles a minute. And if I'm speaking to myself, okay, I don't know who I'm talking to, but <laughs> is that I'm like, I want to do all of them and they're mm-hmm. all a priority, right? They, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is looking at me like, what is wrong with you? We just yeah. launched something last week. Why are we launching something three <laughs> days from now? Right. Yeah. And so talk us through kind of the methodology and how you show up to serve, because I think clearing the table, clearing our minds a bit and giving us systems and order and process is something we really need as, as creatives, as creative founders. Yeah. I, man, there's so much there. I love it. I love this conversation. So first of all, you know, that all of these amazing ideas are, are God inspired. I mean, maybe they're not all God inspired, but for the most part, God gave you your creativity. Right. And so like you, like, There's no reason to turn that down. There's no reason to tone that down because that's not who you are and that's not who he asked you to be. Like if he asked you to live in black and white, you would be like, no, like this is not. No, no. no. Look, you know, I'm in a rainbow. (laughs) (laughs) Like that's the opposite of how he created you. So it doesn't make sense to work against the grain. Like if you, if, if you're at the point where you're like, hey, I'm super overwhelmed and I need your help of like, free my mind, get stuff off my plate. I'm having decision fatigue and I feel super weighed down by the chaos and the clutter. Like that's where I come in. But I understand that like, I cannot force you. I cannot dim your light. I cannot ask you to go against the way that God made you. Like you're going to have ideas all the time. I live with a person who is an entrepreneur, (laughs) serial entrepreneur. So it's, it's painful to you for me to ask you to slow down. And so my work is that we just need to get it all out, give it space again. Like I want to give it all the space that it deserves. And then you just have to trust that as we make this plan, maybe this isn't going to happen in Q1 or Q2, but we will get there. And so the first step really is like this massive brain dump where you just like get all the things out, like random fit inside the box, fit outside the box, like whatever you feel like is on your heart, your mind, even a whisper of an inspiration, like let's just get it all out. And then we can make a plan because now you do actually have to sit down and you only have X amount of hours in the day and to tell your team, hey, I have 10 priorities for the next 90 days. No. That is not possible. That's not a thing. No. You're ruining my hopes and dreams over here. 